Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. Oh, yeah. It's Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and that means here on Ready Check Radio's Twitch channel, it's time for Gaming Gumbo, your weekly gaming wrap-up. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man, as always, and this is episode 91. Of course, we're doing the show live, twitch.tv slash readycheckradio, although if you're watching on YouTube on readycheckradio.com or listening on iTunes, Spotify, any of those places. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. If you like what we do here, give it a like, a thumbs up, turn on the notification, subscribe, comment, all the stuff that feeds the algorithm. But most importantly, tell your friends and come hang out and chat sometime. The website's right there, and I got all the socials in the upper right-hand corner. We got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. The schedule's still going to be wonky for a little bit on this show. Like Next week, I'm going to be commentating uh, a Materia Cup for, uh, that Square Enix is running for Final Fantasy, so there won't be a show next week. The following week, Torchwick and I will be in Ontario trying to qualify for Nationals, <laughs> so they won't. Ooh. So the next two weeks off of Gaming Gumbo, the Relic Grind will air as normal. All the other streams, with the exception of Torchwick two weeks from now, uh, will be normal as well. But Gaming Gumbo, going to be two weeks off after this week. Enjoy the break, gentlemen. Joining me to talk over all the fun stuff today, Mr. Dom Greco. What's up, sir? Hello, hello. How are I you? love your shirt, bro. Love My it. My shirt? Yeah. This is actually uh, a friend of mine made this. A little, little moogle. A little moog. Yeah. You gotta yeah, love yeah. him. Yeah, it's great. How you doing? Uh, How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Zelda's out. Zelda is out. Well, I mean, technically, yeah. I guess it's been out for about nine days, but uh, officially, it, it came out yesterday. <laughs> officially. It did. Yep. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. How's that work? <laughs> uh, <laughs> also on the line, mm. who needs a little more information, so we'll get right I to do. it. Resident artist of Ready Check Radio, Yod. How are you, my friend? I do need more information. We'll get there. We'll the get there. was also asking about that because we were seeing reviews and like end boss videos and stuff online. She's like, but but didn't it just come out yep. like an hour ago? Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. How are you, sir? So, yeah, uh, I'm all right. I'm I ready, do like your know. shirt, too. I like oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so, yeah. Two weeks is good for me. Yeah, you got cons weeks. coming up. What's what, what uh, do yeah, you I'm what do you do it like? So you're an artist. You do motion graphics, still drawing, custom yeah. work, take commissions, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. But so, what do you do at a con? Are you just like one of the you know creators and artists selling stuff at a little table, or do you like run a quote unquote business that shows up to the con? Like, what are you doing at the cons? So it, it it depends on what the con wants from me personally. Like uh, if I pan up and you see behind me the figure that's kind of standing over my head every week, mm -hmm. uh, that was an old design I did for uh, MTAC back in 2012. So in that case, the uh, convention came to me and wanted me to do a spin on their mascot. So I do their all the promotional work and stuff like that for that, their T-shirt design, uh, booklet covers, that type of stuff. And in exchange, they'll bring me out, they'll pay for my airfare and stuff, and I'll have a little table, and I'll also do workshops and stuff at, at the convention, do, um, teaching inking and life drawing and stuff like that normally. I used to do digital art as well for you know showing people, but that type of stuff, it's, it's a little hard to just talk about it, yeah. and I can't really afford a tablet for everybody to draw on. So. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, because I always wondered, like, obviously, you're super talented. I pay you to do the stuff here. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't if I didn't think you were talented. Uh, <laughs> but I, like I go to cons and Steel City Con in Pittsburgh and then, you know, too many games in Philadelphia and, and then bigger right. stuff, PAXs and Comic Cons. And like you always see the the like kind of local artists that buy a small right. table in like the artist gallery in the back corner and stuff like that. And I've always taught my kids, right, like when you're in the front rooms dealing with the dealers, Go ahead and haggle. Like if they got something yep. out for fifty, offer them thirty. Like go ahead. Yep. When you get to the artist's room, you do That's not haggle. 
yeah, you don't haggle. Piece. Like that is if they say it's fifty dollars and you think it's not worth fifty dollars, that's fine. Walk away then. They, you know, yep. that's just the end of it. That's their time. They've put a value on that time. But like, I didn't know if that was you. Like, do you just like, yeah, hey, here's yeah. a bunch of my yeah. bunch of my current drawings and stuff. Let me throw them out on the table and sell them for fifteen bucks a piece. Or if you were doing more stuff like the teaching you mentioned. Yeah, a lot of times I'll have a table there and I'll be doing that. And then when Ali, they they can schedule when I'm doing those workshops for after gotcha. the artist alley closes. So you know that that's not a problem. Um, I like to do most uh, all uh, original stuff, so I'm not infringing on anybody's copyrights or buying anybody. You know, uh, working off of other people's IPs and stuff, which is a harder road road to go because you know most people go there to buy. Uh, Shows and stuff they know. So right, right, right. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but this Momo, this upcoming convention, MomoCon, over uh, Memorial Day weekend down in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I really haven't had the time to put together new stuff for a table just because of everything going on in life. So I'll only be doing the two workshops. Um, if they need me to do any other panels or workshops i can step in to fill in if anybody doesn't show up right for you know art type stuff but i've only got two on the schedule they're both on saturday um in the afternoon time so me that, that, that's not bad the camera's flickering every once in a while it's bothering it? me yeah, yeah uh, that's, that's kind of and weird. then there's I dom when you go to cons you sell your headshots your acting headshots <laughs> like <laughs> just it's just a full booth of you Making, My face. Yeah, just your face making the here's happy, here's sad, and and every single one's the same. It's like you're blue steel. Yeah, it's like you're steel. <laughs> it's like you're wearing a stormtrooper helmet. Every bit's <laughs> picture is exactly the same, but full of emotion, and they all have pink hats on, according to Mystics. Yeah, it's a booth of nothing yeah. but pink hats. Anyway, uh, so yeah, next two weeks, no gaming gumbo. Everybody's doing some uh, stuff all over the place, and. Uh, if you're a fan of Final Fantasy TCG, then tune into the Materia Cup taking place uh, in Kansas. I'll be doing commentary on Saturday the 20th uh, for day one next week. Uh, there'll be a different team one doing day. Top Cut. Yeah, there'll be a different team what, doing what, Top Cut. One day we need to like do a live broadcast at a con. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yod has been asking me that <laughs> since I asked him for the initial logo idea <laughs> and told him I'm, what I was doing. I'm going to Vegas this year for TwitchCon. There you go. <laughs> hey, gang. So uh, as scheduled, ROG Ally over from Asus did get its full reveal this week on its stream. And I got to tell you, like, that stream could have been, I don't know if you watched any of it or all of it, that stream could have been about 15 minutes long. Like, it did not need to be, like, there was a, the whole panel, and somebody from Microsoft was there, and she was talking about, uh, you know, their relationship with the cloud gaming and stuff like that. And, I, like, it was fine, but it was also, like, yeah, none of us care. What are the specs? Yeah. What are the price points? When's it coming out? Like, that's all this needed to be, <laughs> really. Uh, it is available for pre-order now here in the United States through Best Buy. Seems to be the only retailer at the moment uh, that you can actually pre-order the device. The uh, Ally that comes in two different models, gents. And last time we speculated that the one we were seeing, the 699, was probably going to be the low spec one mm. of the model. We were wrong, Dom. We were. We, we were, were wrong. Yeah. That's actually their high-end model. Of the mm -hmm. unit, uh, seven inch screen, 120 hertz, 1080p, uh, the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor, and 512 gigabytes versus basically everything the same, except it's the AMD Ryzen Z1, not Extreme processor, for $599. So $600 and $700, real big difference is the processor, the Ryzen Z1 Extreme versus the Ryzen Z1. Uh, continuing to show this bad boy off, Dom, oh, it looks impressive, and I don't know how they got that price point there, but it's, damn, that is a competitive price point going up yeah, against Steam Deck. It is, and it's on. It's operating on Windows 11, mm -hmm. so uh, it has more likelihood to play your games uh, fresh like freshly installed you don't have to mod anything to do it but uh probably not as uh, uh appealing to the uh, the pirating industry why do you say that 
because yeah. uh, the, you you would have to like specially modify it and install Linux, right? No. no. <laughs> I no. mean, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't, well. I don't I know have... anything about this topic. <laughs> no. I just nope, nope. <laughs> No idea about pirating anything. No, but I, mean, I would assume that the I feel like it works crack. best on Linux. So I mean, this is going to be an absolute uh, emulation beast, just like the Steam Deck is. Uh, yeah, that's you know, that's going to be that's a foregone conclusion. Uh, but I like I don't know if you caught it, but there were a couple points when they were showing like B roll footage during the presentation where they had it running the Steam Deck OS, the Steam OS. <laughs> <Is they? laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know if either That's of you saw flex. that. That is a flex. <laughs> a little flex <laughs> where they were like just mm, mm, here it is. Now, uh, Yod, you and I had watched uh, a Linus Tech Tips video like the day this was kind of announced on their Twitter right. uh, a couple of weeks ago and you know, he kind of Got his hands on it, was allowed to say. I don't know if you saw it, did you? There was a follow-up video like right after the Allies stream went up where no, he that. was a little miffed at a couple of the things that like they led them to believe when they first got their hands on it. And it was one of those, oh, yeah. they didn't lie to us, but when you say up to 50% yeah. and we're testing at 20 to 28 to 32%, Saying up to 50% better performance is a little misleading. I guess maybe you could get it there. There is also a difference in that the Ally does run on three different power cycles. So on the lowest power, um, the the lowest power setting, which I think was 10, 10 or 15, um, mm -hmm. the Steam Deck kind of crushes it. But then at the mm -hmm. 35 and 65 or 25, 35 marks, the ally starts dominating the Steam Deck when you let it draw more power. Uh, and it oh, kind yeah. of lets, does this auto fluctuation thing too, which is really nifty. What did you think of the whole reveal, Jan? Uh, it was interesting, but like you said, it could have it could have been like a 15 minute, like like how PlayStation does state of play, where they just rattle off for you to specs. Because that's all everybody was waiting for, was what's yeah. the actual specs and what's the actual price point. So, I mean, the rest of it was just kind of fluff and... A little boring, <laughs> you know, in my opinion. But you know, that's that's neither here nor there, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the, the specs were pretty much what we expected from the Best Buy leak, I think. And hmm. the fact that it's a hundred dollar difference for the processor is kind of interesting because, like, all the other specs are exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you there's. Think... Go ahead. Oh, you think like with with the Steam Deck, there's there's the. I think there might be a larger price difference between the models because, you know, you can get a little less storage, which you can modify later, a little less RAM or whatever, depending on what you're doing with it, where this is kind of standardized except for the processor. And I do wonder what the actual difference is with the processor. Yeah, like so on the Steam Deck, there were, there were two key differences. There was the storage size. That was the main difference between the three units. Units. And then the base unit had a slightly uh, slower read-write time on its SSD. Right. It was a slightly slower read-write compared to the other high-end models. But other than that, like their processor, their RAM, like all of that was the same. Here we right. kind of see the opposite, where you know it's the processor that is the the key difference between the two units. All the memory and everything else is the same across both units. Five twelve gigabytes. <sighs> I hate. I, mean, it's not I hate bad. it. I hate that my Steam Deck is five twelve. You know, obviously <laughs> I had a two terabyte SSD. I really would like these things to be bigger. And and I think we're gonna get there. I think this is just the fact that another company can enter this market, which is what Steam wanted. Dom, this is exactly yep. what Steam and what Valve wanted was pushing this market. Uh, and kind of giving consoles a run for their money, giving consumers a different option. Uh, they wanted this, and they were upfront that we hope the Steam Deck causes com competition in a market. Yep. It's, and it's now they got healthy. it. Now they yeah. got it. It's always healthy because it brings the price point of of uh, certain uh, parts, you know, down in cost, and allows other people to come up with innovation that triggers sparks of like other innovation elsewhere. And it, it's just, it's constantly, uh, 
going to be involving and improving where if you just have one company in the rat race, they see no reason to change and, and get better and improve because if it's working, it's working. You don't need to innovate on on what already works. That's why the wheel has never been reinvented. I can't justify buying it as a high-end Steam Deck. I, I do want to mess with it, uh, of course, but I can't justify buying it. Uh, I so think, you haven't pre-ordered? No, yeah. I did not. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling like if I would have bought the low-end Steam Deck, I might be enticed by this because I would have mm -hmm. wanted to upgrade to one of the, the higher-end Steam Decks anyway at some point. So I might be enticed to go away, but because I have the high-end one, no, I'm just going to hang tight with the Steam Deck, although I do love that this product's coming in the market. Chat, by the way, is talking a little bit about Asus and their whole AMD processor uh, uh, chips and interactions right now. Yeah, they do have some bad press going on <laughs> on that front, rightfully so, for some things not working. Mm -hmm. This thing's going to sell out. This price point is amazing for what they're they're doing with it. Now we just got to see the performance and who else enters the market. And well, one of uh, what the Steam models Deck, is already sold out, right? What Steam, well, the other one of them wasn't even up for pre order the last oh, time okay. I looked. Okay. It was only yeah, yeah. the $700 one yeah, that was, was up for pre order. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. And I also want to see what does this mean? We already know Valve's working on next gen Steam decks, you know, for, for years from now. Where do they take it? I was already well, impressed only... with Valve getting the price point they could. Now here comes Asus with a very competitive price point. Valve is only allowed to make one more model Steam Deck, and then that's it. They can't. They that's can't it. count to three. Yeah, you can't put so. a three on anything. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, either of you getting one? I, I can't. I just inherited. Uh, a switch. I can't just <laughs> handheld unit. That's right. You did. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if I travel a bit more. Uh, yeah, you said that when for, we talked about it. It's just like for me traveling once or twice a year. If even that, it's not worth it for me. Well, speaking of that Nintendo Switch, Yod, a Zelda <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom makes its release yesterday. Well, I mean, it's official release yesterday. Okay, so explain. Yeah, it's official. <laughs> I need some answers to give to the wife here. Explain. The, the game basically <laughs> leaked online about eight days or so-ish before launch. Uh, uh -huh. So if you were an emulator fan and you knew where to go, uh, you've been able to play for about a week now. <laughs> a little mm -hmm. over a week now. I see, I see. Which has led to Nintendo scrambling and... I mean, DMCA's are going everywhere. <laughs> like, people that were putting up gameplay or boss fights or right. this were getting DMCA's because the game hadn't released yet. And then, that, obviously, they have to go after, you know, the pirates and where the, the files are being accessed and stuff. So, not exactly the best launch here. I will say, right. um, I did buy this, uh, the, <laughs> the legit copy of the game here. Mm. Not because I want to play it on a certain device but uh <laughs> you know uh yes you could have gone and emulated this on something like yuzu or something for the last or rijinx for the for the last week or so yeah i uh dom i know you got the collector set so i want to start with you did you receive it did you open it is it cool like everything that's in it what do you got for us on that front um i do in fact have the collector's edition it's actually right here on my shelf um go into package so it's right there. Um, and uh, no, I did open it. Uh, I do have it. It's right, it's right here. Your yeah, lovely steel, steel book. Yeah. Uh, I, nice. The art book was sealed. I left it in there. Um, I didn't open it. The entire reason I bought it was for the art book. Um, and uh, But not to ever actually read the damn thing. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to open it and I'm going to read it, but I don't want spoilers. So I'm going to wait until Fair. after I've played through the game because there's inevitably going to be uh, stuff, but uh, it's still sealed. You haven't even played yet. Not at all. I haven't played yet. No. Wow. <sighs> because, because I have this other game here, Mario <laughs> Rabbit, and that's also uh, still sealed. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about a pre-show if you had opened it or not. <laughs> so, so, so I do I do intend on playing Zelda um, 
maybe on like Tuesday or something. I've just been really busy. Uh, I had a lot of family stuff going on this weekend and uh, just a lot going on. I want to, it's one of those things that's like Mario Rabbids again. Like I want to sit down and enjoy it when I do play it. Right. Um, and I do have some plans. So I, like I said, I will be playing it on Tuesday, but um, it's not like Mario Rabbids. It's not going to be sitting here uh, sealed forever because I, I explained Mario Rabbids sure. is it, it, it lived up to, you know, there's so much hype I have from the first one. It's like, take Zoolander, for example, since we made a Blue Steel reference before. Zoolander is such a fantastic movie, right? But, like, Zoolander 2 came out. I've never watched it. I have no intention to watch it. Right. Um. So, yeah. I was just resizing uh, you there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's fine. So... To to prove that I will be opening this one, I'm just gonna, <laughs> Let me just gonna go ahead and do that. Open it here <laughs> right on now. stream. Yeah. So or like, we're, we're two weeks from now, I would ask again. Yeah, have you look, opened it? Look, it's open. Yeah, ta-da! Yeah. We did it. Yay! <laughs> we did a thing. Mario Rabbids is still sealed though. You actually opened a video game you bought. Yay! Yeah. Yod, yeah, did yeah, you end yeah. up buying it yet? I, I know your wife uh, really wife really wants it. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's got it. She's got it downloaded. She busted into playing it a little bit the other day. Uh, oh, she wants she wants me to show off her. Uh, Ooh, her she's fancy. got the snazzy Zelda one. Ooh. Yes. We Fancy, saw uh, we saw during the uh, live letter this week for Final Fantasy fourteen Yoshi P playing Zelda at the beginning of the live letter on the same yes, Switch. Yes. Do they still coat these things? Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> he was he was playing it as the live letter started. You know, saying he was playing it more from a developer's per- perspective, seeing some sure of the things. Was. Yeah, sure he was. It is it mm-hmm. is cute watching. Like he gets excited about games, and I like that. You know, somebody working on games that's actually still excited about games. It's hard to be that's that fantastic. in the industry anymore. I, I've got oh, about six, I've got about six, five six, hours in. There's- I've got about five hours in. Um, yeah. Obviously, the reviews so far are very, very good. They're very glowing and and, and all that stuff. And the you know the press is 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 enjoying it. Uh, I just so far, if you liked <laughs> Breath of the Wild and you wanted more Breath of the Wild, <laughs> you got it. Like good for you, and you got some new abilities which kind of make it breath of the wild minecraft um Mm -hmm. i'm having fun don't get me wrong (laughs) i had a lot of fun in breath of the wild too and Mm. and i'm enjoying like some of the shrines and yeah yes dom it's shrines and it's towers there are dungeons i haven't gotten there yet then you know i'm i'm about five four to five hours in i so from the little bit that i know and and the people that i've spoke to yes there are dungeons um i'm in and, the forbidden uh, the forbidden temple right now i just right. got there. so i'm excited like that already has me sold yes it is very still much breath of the wild and i'm okay with that i just really wanted my dungeons i've heard that the first three hours of the game are basically a tutorial and it's really slow so i'm expecting it to pick up a little bit after that um but uh if you're gonna base it off the first like couple hours of the game Probably, uh, probably not a good idea. No, and and I wouldn't leave this as my final review on it or anything. Like I yeah. said, I just got the to the Forbidden Temple before the stream today, and I'm kind of following Impa, and I'm not going to give away any story beats, but we're exploring that temple uh, right now. Mm-hmm. So uh, I am enjoying it, you know, and, and I've obviously gotten sidetracked, right? You know, well, let me, what the hell's that th- glowy thing? Let me go check that out, and. Uh, I do like the quest log with side quests and, you know, I like the way they're handling that. There are, it's, it's like Breath of the Wild with improvements. Um, It's like Breath of the Wild 2? Yeah, almost. (laughs) I I do want to ask, and and it is a little story like, a part of the story, but how do they deal with, like, connecting it to the first game yeah so that part sucked uh (laughs) that pissed me off this does not spoil anything this does not spoil anything it's exactly what you think it is link is max hearts max gear rolling around with zelda something happens you saw it in a trailer so i'm not even spoiling anything but i won't talk about it but if you watch the trailer you see what happens zelda disappears link is hurt. He is brought back by uh he's nursed back by somebody. 
and he's substantially weaker because he's corrupted. There okay. you go. It's okay. exactly what you think. When the game booted up and he had like 150 hearts, I was like, yes, let's get this <laughs> on. Let's do. Oh, now I have three. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was exactly. wondering about that because it's like, OK, so you got a new game. It's it's kind of yeah. like when you go from Destiny to Destiny 2, you know, they got to kick you into, in, in the nuts and throw you off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, make really sure you have no equipment. <laughs> yeah, in really the, in the trailer you like see what data. happens, so I'm not spoiling oh, anything. Yeah. But yeah, before I, that, you have max hearts. After that, you have three. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure how it all connected together. If they acknowledged, I'm literally that, showing the trailer game. right now that has yeah, that yeah. sequence in it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't see this trailer, so I was hoping really there would be some save data from like the first game to carry over to the second game to yeah. bring some progress over. But like that is a technical challenge because you also have to keep in mind, like, yeah, but what if somebody's brand new to playing it and then right. you have two versions of the game to right. balance? So it's kind of a nightmare. So like I got I, I got it. At some point you gotta make leak link weak. I get it. I knew it was coming. I wasn't surprised by it at all, but it was still kind of like ugh. <laughs> ugh. Uh, I will say, dog. From what I, understand, I am though, Korok seeds are back. Right? I am, yeah, they are. Uh, I am breaking shrines left and right. By the way, <laughs> like it's and uh, Mystic says they managed to break the first shrine too. That ascend ability, by the way, that is abusable AF. Abusable oh, AF. Yeah, I know you were worried about it. And that's why I want to bring it up. Yes, you can find caves and warp to the top of mountains. Yes. You can do that in most places. There are minor limitations. Uh, like the ceiling can't be too far away from you. If the ceiling's too far away, then you can't target it. So mm -hmm. there, there is a limit. You're not going to have problems using the ability. But I've been doing shit like sticking, melding a bunch of concrete pillars together in a long-ass concrete pillar. Okay. Picking that up, rotating it so it's vertical, and putting it as high in the sky as my arc will allow me to get it, and then letting go of the ability to just have it fall straight back down. But then what I do <laughs> is I put the recall ability on it to have it play in reverse so it flies back up into the air, and then, <laughs> and then I ascend into the bottom of the pillar as it's rising mm -hmm. up and shoot myself miles oh my into the air on the top of so, the pillar and then glide wherever the hell they want. like you so what you what you mean to tell me is their game designers didn't think oh they to, they absolutely did, thought they they didn't think to allow you or disallow you to ascend if you were in motion like that seems like the easy fix i'm not in motion that's the thing you you can't ascend when you're in motion you have to be standing mm -hmm. there so i well the platform's in motion the platform is in motion, is in motion. As long right. as I can target the bottom of it, I'm good, and it'll warp. Well, me that's what I'm saying. It's it. technically you're in motion if the platform's in motion. That's that's what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm not in motion when I trigger ascend. I'm just standing on the ground. Mm -hmm. it, it is going to be. I will say this. Uh, while the game may end up, and I don't know, I'm not there yet. May end up just being Breath of the Wild two with some different abilities and some wonky new puzzles because of those abilities at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that may very well end up what it ends up being for me. And that's fine. Um, I am kind of like curious, Yod. <laughs> it's like watching Minecraft videos. I have no desire to play Minecraft. Just like absolutely none. Nope. But if yeah. you have a cool thumbnail and a title telling me you built this wacky ass thing and I'm like, how the hell would you? I will watch your stupid video. I have a feeling this is going to be a lot like that where people just build ridiculous yeah. things in here because they didn't shut off the rules intentionally. Yeah, they, they want people to do crazy ass stuff with this and they're going to do crazy because I mean, it's it's people. They're going to try to break the game. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> I know I know it's too soon to be thinking about it, but I'm very curious what they have up in sleeve for their uh, expansion pass. Well, hell, not only that, they've already talked about they have ideas on what they want to do with the next Zelda. Yeah. Oh, Can we Do you think we're going to get 3 Zeldas in one console? Possible. I well, I mean, they don't have any console plans right now. They literally right. just had a thing where they said, "No, we're not doing any consoles in 2023, and maybe not in 2024." Yeah, 
I mean, they cause... really haven't pushed the limits of the hardware yet. No, they have. The max. Yeah. They have. It's not, the not Switch. Sure. It, it, yeah. It's a toaster. I... I, I agree with you. Don't get me wrong. I agree with you. But for the games they make that they want people playing on the Switch, they're kind of at a comfortable level. Yeah. Where with like well, Xbox and PlayStation players and game maker devs and stuff like that, they try to push the complete envelope of that system to the point where it breaks and then you gotta come up with a new system. Yeah, see I would I would kind of disagree. I would I feel like the Switch has been maxed since like six months after it actually released. Since Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah. <laughs> and I I will be honest, playing this, I have had performance issues. Like really? no, nothing staggering, but if you get a good eight to ten enemies that have a fair amount of motion to them, um, yeah, the game slows. Yeah, the game does slow. Okay. You know, does okay. there is frame stutter. You know, um, and Breath of the Wild did the same thing. Breath of the Wild taxed the system seriously. Yeah, yeah, and, and I feel oh, like uh, this is going to run a little bit better just because they've had more time to optimize and the 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 game itself. Through learning lessons of Breath of the Wild, Dom. Yeah. So the reason I say, like, do you think we're gonna get three Zeldas for a console's lifespan is because I do see in you know the near by near I mean up to three years uh console coming, you know, for right for the, the Switch. And they'll probably do the third one as a double dual release like they did for a lot of other previous Zelda games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when they uh Twilight Princess uh the wii u and the switch initially yeah mm. you said uh yeah. i said it was gonna run fine you said it wasn't gonna run all that well it runs fine it literally does i'm making the point of it does max out the system like if you i'm not having any performance issues where i can't play the damn game some frame stuttering mm -hmm. it's it's fine it, it's not cyberpunk it is not. It definitely <laughs> is not it cyberpunk. It's not Jedi Fallen Honor. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Or, hey, Fallen there's no, already Fallen a Honor. world record no, for this, other, by the, the way. Jedi. There's already a world record for speedrunning the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Of course there is. One hour, 34 minutes, 33 seconds. Full playthrough. On launch day. On launch day. I was going to say, now, now is this the official version? Or is yeah. This the yeah, 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 yeah. Official version. Official it was version. the official version after they practiced for seven days. Yeah, right? probably. Right. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it still ran yeah. better than... It runs fine. My point was the system is maxed out, to, to Yod's are, point. <laughs> are, are you, there are aren't you many areas where you have OLED? eight to 12 monsters running you. I was chaining a bunch of shit. To see if it would uh, FPS. You were, you were drop, trying to did. break it. Yeah, I was being you're trying stupid. to break it. Yeah. Okay. Are Are you running the OLED version or the original version? Oh, I'm playing on my 4K TV. Fuck the Switch's screen. That thing. Okay. That thing's okay. docked on my 4K TV. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Yeah, we, um, we got the Zelda dock over there next to the TV now. Nice. <laughs> I'm interested where you come in with this. Yeah, uh, Dom, after getting mm -hmm. some play time. I, honestly, the first few hours, like if that's all it ends up being, I'd be like, Dom's going to hate this. Like, Oh, I already know. I do not judge off the first few hours. Yeah, I you already can't know that, so. in this one. Yeah. You can't. It, it's The cool thing is you do get the abilities quickly. Yeah. Like you get that bang, 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 bang. It is the same in, in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm enjoying it. So far, I'm not blown away by it. I guess that's yeah. that's fair. I guess that's a fair assessment. I mean, are you getting what you expect out of a sequel? So far, yeah. But it's, that's it's just you really know. all you can ask, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's weird because like Zelda games have typically not really done many sequel type things. Like the yeah. the one exception is Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, and it's like those games do play vastly different. Where this one doesn't you, really you seem like You also had, what, A Link to the Past and Link Between Worlds with, like, all well, the that, decades apart. Because in Japan, yeah, those are yeah, literally yeah. named one and two. I think, what is it, Power of the, the Power of the Triforce? I can't remember yeah, what it's called. Think, yeah. But it is a one and a two. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, like, close, like, right back-to-back -back kind of things where this one does seem it's very much Breath of the Wild, but, you know, it's new mechanics, it's new features and stuff, and that's what 
you could hope for out of a sequel, I guess. But. So Mystic says you're getting what you expect out of a Zelda game. Triforce of the Gods. Thank you, Takao. Yeah, Triforce of the Gods and Triforce of the Gods 2. That was Link to the Past and Link Between Worlds uh, in Japan. Uh, Mystics asks, are you getting what you expect out of a Zelda game? I'm getting what I expect out of a Breath of the Wild game. I'm <laughs> I'm one of those. I, I am uh, I lean a little more with Dom to the this isn't the Zelda of my brain. Breath of the Wild was not the Zelda of my brain of what a Zelda game is. Again, it was very good. I enjoyed it. I beat the piss out of it. And I'll do the same thing with Te Tears of the Kingdom. But I, my brain just works differently on what it thinks a Zelda game is. And, and I'm kind of with so, you on that, Dom. Yeah. So you're yeah. saying, get off my lawn? Is that what's going on? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I'm all for changing games and innovating, but... If you're going to keep the name, you have to kind of keep some of the elements. And when those elements don't exist, is it still the same game? I very much feel like Breath of the Wild could have been a completely brand new franchise. Right? It didn't need to be Zelda. Uh, they just they did it because it's a launch title. And if they tried a new IP, do you really think Breath of the Wild would have been as successful as it was? I don't. I can, so. I, I can understand what you're saying. There, there's a lot of... Uh... TV shows and movies out there not right now that do the same for me. It's like, like we're talking with the Resident Evil TV show with uh, Lance Riddick in it. If they called it anything else, gave him a different name, it could yeah, have would been have been a mediocre sci-fi TV show. show. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But as it is, it's a really bad Resident Evil TV show. <laughs> so, hey, you know. I I wanted to ask before we leave, kind of the main topics here, and and bust through some just miscellaneous pieces. Uh, we're seeing a lot right now with AI, right? Like oh, chat God. and and like even Nintendo has talked about doing some stuff with it too, and AI chat and AI art and AI video creation and AI this and stuff. I, I want to know, Dom, where you see AI in gaming. Like, obviously, it has a place. Mm -hmm. Um, but where is it? Hmm. That is a very good question. Uh, it, it's one of those things where if used correctly, it could be great. Um, you could do different things like it can it, it can remember uh, certain aspects about it. If you use it in a persistent game like an MMO or something, uh, it can keep track of different players and different friends that have been there. And you can ask it, hey, when was the last time my friend was here? And it would be able to tell you and do like all kinds of really cool different things. Uh, I don't know if we're quite there yet. I think we're close, but it really it's going to come down to how people utilize it. And really, right now, I see it more for story driven purposes and, and rather than like meaningful interactions. And it's going to just kind of like be used to generate different stories. Uh, I hope I hope a lot like I have big hopes for it and I, I hope it's not just for story purposes. Uh, you see how like just AI art and stuff in general. And I know that's very controversial topic for Yod, but like um, uh, the new Scream movie, Scream 6, uh, Mike Shinoda released a music video that was all uh, procedurally generated AI art that like changed on the beat of the music. And I just found myself staring at it, fascinated by it. And it's not that I thought the art was good, but I loved just like the intricacies of it. And it's like, I feel like AI art in that direction is probably like a replacement for a lot of companies gaming companies in particular for like concept art but there's always going to be need for traditional artists and i don't think it's ever going to replace them yeah i mean there's the obvious and, and you know baron vagabond talking about a demo google did with io uh, i there's there's the there's the logical inclusion of it right which is just let's have the ai write the code that would take us two days to write let's have the ai do it in an hour and a half you know, and, and then we'll yeah. check it for bugs. Like there, that's an obvious implicate uh, uh, application to using AI to benefit game development, where it's not replacing a human, it's not taking over for a human, it's taking a human's ideas and doing what a computer does. Right? Does math faster than dude? That was the whole point of computers right. way back when. Was like do <laughs> math. Um, right. And so that's an obvious application to me. I, I'm talking more. Yod, like in game, and and we've seen things where, you know, and and I know to and Chad, he's, he's said this on on other shows too, like making the NPC chat that's going on in the background 
of the MMO you're walking through um, more interactive, more immersive, because it's based on things that are actually going on. It's changing its chat. You don't get the same chat right. bubble out of the kid running through Stormwind every time he runs past the auction house. Right. It's changing based on players being in his way and this and that and stuff like that. Did you see Magic Man stared was staring at the wall for two hours on <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Like that. You know, oh like... my God! Someone let the let their infernal golem loose in Stormwind. Did you see that? It killed everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's yeah. been some people messing with it. Ian has a Costas at World of Warcraft mess with it. I don't know if you know this guy about this or not. He was messing with it to see if he could get uh. A, I think it was chat GPT. Yeah, it was chat GPT. Uh, he was trying to see if he could get it to tell him the storyline of the next World of Warcraft expansion. Like, where is the next logical place for the World of Warcraft uh, MMO to go? And his response was, I kid you not, the number one prompt it returned to me was return to the Shadowlands. So I feel like I have pretty good job security, not too worried about chat GPT <laughs> replacing me anytime soon. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Really? Return to Shadowlands? I mean, inevitably, oh, we're going to go back, but, you know. You they, know, they you, you, know you know, someone, some executive over there is going to go, that's a great idea, mm -hmm. <laughs> and do that. Yod, on it's the fair. art front, Hazacostas did say that World of Warcraft has used AI assistance before, but mostly in the art department to do some work that otherwise freed up the art team from more grunt work. So like scaling, sizing gear, fitting fair, uh, you know, characters with different races and stuff like, like right. that. Like, hey, we made the chess piece. Now somebody's got to go make 70 versions of this chess piece for every single class and combination and everything. Is that replacing the artist, or is that a, a good use application for somebody like you that gets paid for art? I think that would be a decent usage of it because, like you said, it's there to do math. It's there, The computer is there to do math. It's to do things faster that are just mundane tasks, leaving the actual creative stuff for the artist to do. The... The problem I have with the AI art side is that when they're teaching this stuff, they need to ask the artists. They can't just go scrub the internet and create the style because a lot of those artists on the internet, myself included, did not consent to you utilizing my style. In yeah, that way. and we're going to see lawsuits litigate this over the exactly. next few years to really set up the rules. Exactly. And that that's where the main complaint comes in. If you go, okay, this is X batch of my art, uh, pay me X amount, and you can scrub through it all you want. Hey, cool. You know, you, you sign that away. That's that's up to the individual artist. But don't go online and just say, you know, scrub Google, the entirety of Google for, you know, all of this style with without consent. Yeah. So, what, yeah. What I like about AI art in particular is... As someone who can't even draw stick figures, if I was to go, hey, Yod, I have this like fantasy idea and I don't have a reference for it and it's impossible because it doesn't exist to be able to have like AI art generate like the closest thing. And I could be like, hey, something along the lines of this, this is what I envisioned, like use that yeah. as like a concept piece. That's what I enjoy AI art for as a non-artist. So, um, it, yeah, that type of stuff can can work. So he's posing the other side of the argument. Like, if right. I want something in the style of a Picasso or a Rembrandt, uh, I don't have to go ask Picasso's estate or Rembrandt's estate for permission to view all of his work. Uh, and then presuming I'm talented enough to do so, I am not. But if I'm talented enough to do so, then recreate a work in that style. Um, what is the difference well, between me doing that going and looking at 200 Pablo Picasso paintings, or in this case, going on Google, looking at Yod's publicly available stuff, and then me drawing something in that same style because I'm really inspired by Yod's style. What's the difference if it's me creating it versus my computer creating it? If I'm creating it, there is zero copyright or legal implications. Right. There, right. Are just, there just aren't any. 
Yeah, it's my thing. drawing. I was yeah, inspired by the it. darkness of your art, and so I did my yeah. own thing in that style. Now, you, because you I've had my computer do it, it, now I've had because I've had my computer do it. There's a legal implication. There technically is because that makes it the ability for you to sell that on a massive scale. And that's always also been the issue with drawing fan art and things like that is the whole thing between commissioning a piece and mass producing a piece. Once you start getting into computer generated things, artworks, you are able to mass produce it at a snap of the fingers. So that rolls Which, into, by the way, was something we just talked about is actually a plus yeah. for gaming. Because they're right. able to take their concepts and scale them and do all these things for multiple right. styles very quickly. But that is when cons with consent of those artists because those artists work for that company. It's going to be interesting. All these things are it absolutely 100% going to be litigated over the next three to four years. Whether it's drawing, painting, hell, fiction writing. Like, we are go write me a horror story in the vein of Stephen King. And now I try to publish it or, uh, you know, what, whatever. We are going to see this right. stuff litigated here in the United States. I see in chat where kind of we started, it looks like we started down a public domain argument. That really doesn't <laughs> actually apply here uh, nope. to what we're talking about. Because the argument is not that Picasso's stuff is so old it's in the public domain. Yod's is not. That's not the argument. If Picasso was just the same age as Yod and just as famous, public domain doesn't enter, but it's still a discussion. You know, Picasso's stuff right. is widely available in museums. I can go and see it. I can pull it up online and I can draw something. Yod's, is, yeah. So we get a public domain really doesn't, that's a whole separate yeah. argument I and one that's just, valid, just not in this piece. I think it's just because you're actually using and scanning that piece of art that you don't have permission to use. That if you were to like copy uh, by hand and like imitate that style, you drew that, then you can scan it and and put that in there. And I think that's probably the better solution and what should be done instead of just. I think it's a know. shit ton of gray area, and I'm glad I'm not a federal judge when it comes yeah, to this yeah. stuff. There, there's so much gray area in copyright that it's. But then you have people in charge that actually have to make decisions on this stuff, like Bobby Kotick, for instance, <laughs> who runs, yeah. you know, maybe a company you've heard of, Activision Blizzard. Uh, and he was doing an interview about uh, AI. And as reported by Kotaku, Kotick was asked his opinion of AI in a company-wide meeting last week. He said, I don't know how much people realize that a lot of modern-day AI, including ChatGPT, started with the idea of beating a game, whether it was Warcraft or Dota or Go or Chess. But that's how these large language learning model AI technologies all started from this idea of beating a game. And that kind of makes sense. IBM's Deep Blue, you know, that, that whole project was about solving puzzles and, and games and was like the, the precursor to what we have. He then expressed his belief that LLMs will be influential as the first as, as influential as the first Macintosh in terms of how meaningful the impact of AI would be on society, both positive and negative. And said, for what we do, I think it'll have a profound impact on the things we'll be able to do in game development for a long time. It will enable us to do things that we haven't been able to do for a long time. And, okay, fine. I mean, that's just kind of a general sentiment. But how about an example? Okay. Bobby Kotick gave Guitar Hero as an example and said, I've always had this vision for what a new Guitar Hero product could be. But without having AI and then the processors embedded either in phones, in computers, or game consoles that allow you to actually have the speed of processing to enable that AI, we've never been in a place where AI is going to have practical reality and ap applicability for games until now. And I think when you look out over the next five or seven years, the impact in game making is going to be extraordinary. Uh, so let me give you Guitar Heroes as an example, Tom, and then not tell you what my actual idea is in any way, shape, or form. Just imply that AI will make it possible, but probably not for a few more years. Like, I, it's just, he's just talking yeah. out his ass. My, my assumption is he's just, he wants the AI to chart the music, and... Uh, that's yeah. I've had this idea really for Guitar Hero idea. that we haven't been able. I'm sick yeah. of paying royalties. <laughs> I'm really sick of paying royalties. 
I, I think he doesn't want to pay anyone. He just wants nah. the AI and go, make me Guitar Hero next generation and yeah. let it do the entire thing. That's... You know, no devs, no no, no musical rights, nothing. It just makes the entire game for him. Yep. Rock Band's better. Just I said it. it. I don't care. Just do it all. <laughs> Uh, hey, I know this isn't... We didn't do the Relic Grind this week. Uh, the live letter was yesterday. We'll talk about that on next week's show. Uh, but Square's financials did come out, and I did want to just kind of update everybody. They weren't great. Um, they were down pretty much across the board, including in the MMO category, not having an expansion in 14 and in uh, D- uh, Dragon Quest X. We'll do that to you, not having an expansion. But So they're now like kind of looking at a reshuffle over the next medium slash long term, whether that's opening new studios or buying new studios. And they want to kind of, they've said they want to focus on games with global appeal and revisit the total development process to bolster quality. I mean, these are all good things to be saying. Let's see if they actually do it. (laughs) I, I don't know. I, I always saw Square Enix as kind of the uh, the uh, game developer that has more of a Japanese edge to it, mm-hmm. as opposed to the other uh, developers which had more of a global edge. So if you wanted more more Japanese feel to the game, you go to Square Enix. And, and and if they go for a more global feeling to other games, they might lose that niche. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. In their case, we'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just sold their Western studios, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. On a completely, I'm I'm rewinding for a second because I just remembered something. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Kotick's idea is probably, uh, you know, trombone hero. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Hey, uh, just a few miscellaneous pieces for you. Sources are saying the big PlayStation showcase is just a couple weeks away. The one that they presumably or at least rumoredly delayed because of the whole Activision purchase of by uh, Microsoft. Uh, Jeff Grubb at Giant Bomb and some others are reporting this is probably going to take place the week of May 25th. Um, new trailers, new reveals, and stuff like that. And that's going to kind of kick off, gang, like a really busy period in gaming. Because then we're going to have the the Summer Game Fest and the, the Xbox Showcase and all that stuff that was not going to be at E3 but around E3. Uh, that stuff uh, is going to be right around then. So now Sony kind yeah. of taking the lead here. I re- I, I'm excited. I'm excited. I love I love that stuff. And I think Sony's been doing them right lately. Yeah, I'm. I'm just always gonna sit here and just hope for Silent Hill. Well, I, I mean, I'm, didn't we get a bunch of Silent we Hill? Kn- yeah, we we got a bunch of Silent Hill stuff. <laughs> we kn- the room the remake's still cooking by Bluebird team. I'm excited to buy you know Blue Point and some of the Metal Gear kind of teasing stuff that they've been doing. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. Do you yeah. remember that uh, that Trevor Jacob dude? I know this isn't Trevor exactly Jake. gaming related. Um, kind of. He was the one that did a YouTube video in 2021 where he just he crashed his plane on purpose. Oh, yeah. Do you guys remember this? Oh, yeah. I do. Chat, do you remember this? It was like a... He, he was just, oh, my God, my engine failed, and he just, like, bailed. And everybody yeah. was like, dude, there's, there's no way that's real. Like, a real no. pilot, even an amateur pilot is going to be like, all right, let me try and follow my checklist. Let me try and refire this engine. Let me do this. Let me do this. He like had The cam- plane was still gliding. Yeah, he it wasn't flight. even like free-falling. He was not in any immediate danger. Yeah, and in the video looked like he trimmed the plane down, too, so that right. it like well, it crashed as soon as he jumped out of it. It was going straight down, so it didn't cover any real distance at all. There was yeah, like no, a bunch of stuff. Go ahead. Technically, trimming the plane down... Um, in some engines can restart it, but you have to still be in the plane. <laughs> restart it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you're going to shoot more wind and, but he didn't even attempt right. to restart it. There were so yeah. many flags yeah. in the video. Like everybody was like, even non pilots or nobody, they were just like, wait, the engine stopped. So you jumped out like immediately. Did he- did he mention like four times? Like, this is why I always wear a parachute. Like he was trying yeah. to like force us to believe it. Yeah. Right. 
and I mean, wearing an emergency shoot is one thing, but he had a skydiving rig on, which is completely different. And managed to take his selfie stick and phone with him out the plane, out yep. of the plane. Like, yep. if I'm a pilot and I can't, and I got a bail, then fuck it. You know, I'm out. Yeah. Later, uh, he filmed yeah. the whole thing and then like got picked up by, had to walk miles and get picked up. It was ridiculous mm-hmm. at the time. Yep. Hey, guess what? It was fake. Why no, am I bringing it up here her. on a gaming show? Because he actually uh, said it was part of a GTA-like stunt, Grand Theft Auto-like stunt, uh, to promote a wallet that had partnered and wanted to sponsor a video. Was it worth it? Was well, it worth- <laughs> probably not, because now he's looking at up to 20 years in prison because he also obfuscated the entire investigation into this that the FAA was trying to do and lied and hid things, including allegedly him and his buddy recovering great portions of the plane, dismantling it in his house and kind of dropping it in random garbages throughout town, much like a serial killer would dispose of body parts. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Oh. I mean, just if I, you know, if I was going to do something yeah. like that. Uh, <sighs> looking up to 20 years. Totally worth it. Yep. Whatever mm-hmm. wallet that is, I don't want it, by the way. Right. No. All of a sudden, I don't want it. Yeah. Here's a demo for you guys. Starting on the 15th, this is the video from the uh, Layers of Fear. Dem- uh, 11 yeah. minutes of gameplay they showed about a month ago or whatever. I'm very excited. The, this demo is going to be available for a week starting on the 15th. So you don't have to just watch this 11 minutes. You can go and play it and mess with it. I cannot wait. I cannot wait, Dom. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> excited. I, I've always loved this. This is like one of my favorite franchises. Uh, I'm, I'm playing the hell out of it. Yes, and you're going to stream it, Mike? I don't know, man. That'll be Monday, and I got to do my Final Fantasy oh, TCG yeah, stream yeah. on Monday. I don't know. It's probably even likely that I'm going to play this before Mario Rabbids. <laughs> it, that, I I don't I wouldn't put that at probably likely. I'd be that's a definite. You will play this at, at before this you point, play Rabbids. At this point, you might as well put that Mario Rabbids in a time capsule, buried in your backyard, <laughs> and come back to it in twenty years. <laughs> put it in the time capsule for the kids. <laughs> Dig it up seventy-five years from now, and make sure you lick the cartridge when you open this. Right. I want to make. I want to know if it still tastes like ass. Uh, uh-huh. We got some gaming movie slash shows that Yod wants to go through. What do we got here? We we mentioned one of these a couple of weeks ago, but now we have trailers apparently. Right, we got trailer for Gran Torino and Turismo. Uh, Turismo. Turismo. Gran Turismo. Gran Torino was something else. Yeah, that <laughs> totally different concept. <laughs> that was a good movie, though. It was a great movie. It was a great movie. But Gran Turismo, on your hand, looks like it's going to be a flaming pile of yeah, scrap. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Uh, Twisted Metal actually looks kind of interesting, though. I fall and the other way. Really? really? You fall the other yeah. way? Yeah, I fall the other way. So, like, you take these two games, right? And I prefer Twisted Metal over Gran, Gran Turismo. I'll take Twisted Metal any day of the week. In terms of the the shows, Gran Turismo seems like I don't. There's not really a story to the game, so you can't really mess up the story to the game that doesn't have a story, right? Mm-hmm. Twisted Metal, they're not following the story at all. Like the story of Twisted Metal is basically a demolition derby that is set up by Calypso, and the winner of the tournament gets anything in the world that they want with no limitations, bringing people back from the dead or whatever. There's zero limitations to it. Um, and this, this is no, uh, you know, Captain America drives a, a package across the country and that's it. Like that's I mean, the Calypso plot. could still be in, in it. We're just looking at the it, teaser. For he's, this a, one. he's a delivery driver. He's not participating yeah. in a tournament. It's he like, could it's get dragged into thing. it. He's got a few episodes to get dragged into it all. You know, you I feel know. like they would have billed that as the synopsis if that was the case. Uh, I you got to see the clown at the end. He looked good. You know, the the quality looks decent. So uh, I'm I'm leaning more towards Twisted the metal than I Grand want Twisted it to be good. I just I know it's not. It's not gonna be. I'm setting realistic expectations. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> I don't give a rat's ass about either. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't care. 
Let's uh, slide over and do games of the week. Of Gaming Gumbo here. It's where the three of us give you a game. Could be a video game, board game, card game, mobile game, whatever. Something we're playing, have played, never played before, but think you should check out. And you let us know in the comments below while you're chiming in on all the topics we discussed today. Uh, and anything you want to talk about in gaming, throw it in there. Why not? Uh, who gave the best recommendation? I'm going to go first, and it would be really easy to give you The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I'm enjoying the experience so far, even if it's not blowing my mind away. Uh, that's okay. But why it's not blowing my mind away, I feel like you got to go play A Link to the Past. It's it's probably been a while since you played it. Zelda, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past on the SNES. That is... Or the a Steam Deck. Zelda game. In my head, that is a Zelda game. Like maybe the quintessential one. As much as I love all of them, Ocarina of Time, Majora, and all that stuff, Link to the Past might be the Zelda in my head when it comes to what is a Zelda game. So go uh go relive a memory. Go ahead, Dom. So yeah, so since Tears of the Kingdom came out, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. I'm gonna go with Diablo 4. Um, <laughs> seems good seems legit yeah yeah uh, totally. so so they are having the uh the, the server stress test right now um and I've, I've played it i played the previous uh beta when that was uh, a couple what was it last month or month two months ago i don't remember at this point um i played that one and and this one uh i have yet to do the world boss i'm gonna do that later tonight uh but i have hit max level just a little bit before uh the the show tonight and uh, I'm having fun. I'm not a huge fan of the Druid. That's probably a class I'm going to stay away from. Uh, but the the Necromancer that I played in the previous test, uh, I really did enjoy. So, Yod. So we just watched uh, the Dungeons and Dragons movie today. So I want to delve back into Neverwinter Nights. Ooh. Yes, classic D and D game. Mm -hmm. and, and not that Dark Alliance game that you gave me a code for, Mike. Not that one. <laughs> hey, man, you got it for free. Shut up. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah, I still haven't played it. <laughs> and honestly, you still overpaid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Let us know who uh, gave the best recommendation in the comments. No Torchwick uh, today. Recovering. Trying to get back on a normal sleep schedule after coming home for summer from college. Nice to have Torchwick back. Torchwick will be back next week. We will have Tarkoth tonight, though, midnight Eastern, hopping into Final Fantasy 15. And we'll be back not next week or the week after, but the week after that for Gaming Gumbo. Follow us on Twitter. You'll always know. Relic Grind is normal. Everybody else is normal. Until the next time we reconvene, Yod, where can everybody find you? Uh, Yod works on the socials and over Memorial Day weekend at MomoCon in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Dom. So, yeah. Uh, you can find me down below at uh, Itzista. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there, Magic Man One. But more importantly, follow at RC Radio, R A I D E O. And you'll know every time we go live with a podcast stream or we're just hanging out, and you're welcome to come. Thank you for uh, watching. Stay safe. See you in the servers. Oh,